second round of the 2021 European Le Mans series, the drivers will be locking horns high on the hills. Can you guess where we are? ELMS is back at the Red Bull Ring. We've got 41 cars that will be taking on this raging Austrian circuit. And just to make things a little more difficult, they forecast some rainy showers. Let's go racing. It's a circuit like no other. The surroundings are unique and the track is wild. Elevation changes, brutal braking points, super fast corners. Tricky overtaking spots. You have to fully commit to this track or you won't get any pace at all. I'm Ferdinand Habsburg and this is my home race. GTE, the number 80 Iron Lynx team leads the championship after their impressive victory last month in Barcelona. With their GT3 title in the Michelin Le Mans Cup last year, the Italian team is eager for more success. But another Ferrari 488 could give them a hard time, the experienced number 55 Spirit of Race crew. For sure we enjoyed the first race. Here uh, we have also the ballast because we have 30 kilos coming from Barcelona. This track is really nice and uh, the gap are really close between all the cars. Our target is to be on the podium and uh, to keep uh, the leadership after the race. The target wouldn't it be great to win LMS? We've come second, we were third last year, so yeah, I mean, obviously to win it would be great. I don't know, there's some stiff competition this year. Uh, the Iron Lynx car is uh, very, very strong. They have a very, very strong uh, lineup in that one, so it's going to be difficult. Um, but uh, honestly, I just love driving the car. I just love coming to these weekends and uh, having some fun in the car. It's awesome. The Ferraris are, of course, not alone in their title quest. Reigning champions, the number 77 Proton competition team, will be tough opponents. Christian Reed is not just the team boss, he drives too, and he has a heart that beats for Porsche. His team not only supports the German brand's junior drivers, but this smart organisation has turned Hollywood stars into endurance racers too. My father started racing in 1995 and he founded Proton Competition in 1996. So, and this was the time when I say I, I have to do this as well. I like, I like race cars, I love it. Uh, but it took me another three years to get, uh, he's okay to, to race a car. At the beginning he said, ah, it's, it's too dangerous. But at the end, uh, I did my first race in 1999, Fiat GT in Monza. I only drove Porsche uh, since I started racing. Porsche is for me, you know, it's it's a dream since since I've been a little, little child. Um, I grew up uh, 100 kilometers south of Stuttgart, so it's a passion. First, I'm the driver and team, but also I'm doing some management. But um, we have a lot of good guys in the team, so they're doing great, and so I'm focused on racing. This is part of the program with Dempsey Racing to, to give the young drivers a chance. It's great to, to see those young guys coming from Carrera Cup. Um, they are fast and they do the first steps in endurance with us. I have a lot of fun with all of them. It's good, it's, it's good for me, it's keeping me young.
Michael now, uh, before with Patrick. This is a different story. Um, they're very good on, on, on their business. They're doing movies and, you know, great. Um, but racing is different. But to see how, how, how they approach, you know, how, how they commit to this, you know, like, like uh, Michael this year, he's not doing any, any uh, film projects for the whole season, just to really focus on racing and to see how he's improving and how he's learning and everything. It's, it's great to see. To win a, a race, to win a championship, to win Le Mans, it's always great. It's 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 a team spirit, and I'm enjoying it as much as I'm a driver. I, as we win it as a team, it's always great to win. So it's what, what, what we're here for. Le Mans 2018, when we won with Matt Campbell and Julian, uh, Julian Andlauer, it was great. Le Mans is, is, is the greatest race in the world. It's if you're in a podium there with uh, all these people there, and uh, it's great. It's a great feeling. LMP3 runners-up in last year's Michelin Le Mans Cup. Cool Racing stepped up to ELMS and caused a sensation last month in Barcelona, winning the season opener. We know that we are able, if we put together with the team and with good pit stop and a good strategy, that it, we are able to finish on the podium. We'll see each race after each race. If we are reliable during the season and finish in the top five at each race, sure, it's possible. United Autosports, the reigning champions with their number two Ligier, must also be watched closely. A starter failure in the first pit stop ruined their chances in Catalonia and they are eager to fight back. Barcelona was uh, it was just pure bad luck really. Uh, hopefully we're better luck here and uh, so far so good in practice. We look pretty strong already so hopefully we can uh, bounce back. You know, last year we won the championship and we had a non-finish. So obviously if we can get back up onto the top step in this race and uh, keep the momentum going, I think we're okay. But if we had another uh, disappointing result this weekend, things would start to get a little bit more difficult. But there's no reason we should. We should be, uh, we should be okay. Red Bull Ring. Red Bull Ring. Red Bull Ring. Red Bull Ring. For sure, Zeltweg here in Spinberg. Red Bull Ring. Uh, this one, Red Bull Ring. 16 years old. Ooh. 17. 16. Uh, I'm gonna say 16. 16? 16. 16? No. 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 No, it's a void. Um, unlimited. Seven sets. Four sets. Sixteen. Five and a half. Two for practice and then I think three for the race plus two jokers. Was it like Memora House or Roman Rusnov? Mm. I don't know. Give me the answer. I, I don't want, no? Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> uh, Emmanuel Collard? Mm. No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know all the drivers. <laughs> Phil Hansen. Mm. Phil Hansen. Mm. Phil Hansen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, oh, you're not nice to me. <laughs> These are hard. What does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea. Or 8856 No idea. Is that correct? <laughs> Uh, 8860 2018. Oh, no idea. No, no idea. Uh, I think it's three layers of flame retardant Nomex. Oh, he's Portuguese. 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 Is he French? Oh, now I'm going to get crucified. <laughs> Penalty's coming my way, isn't it? <laughs> Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> he might get crucified, but our winner is Jody Fannin. <laughs> Super successful in GT racing, WRT caused a shock in the LMP2 field in Catalonia, their first ever win. Now it's time for them to prove that they can be serious title contenders. Perfect weekend for us, the first one. I mean, I'm quite happy with my uh, first win in LMP2. I think the whole team worked really well for that. Also with my teammate, I think with all the winter, was really good. And obviously now that we're leading, now that we see the performance, we're at the top, but it's not going to be as easy as uh, people think. Among their rivals, Panis Racing. Second in Barcelona, the French team are reaching for new targets after their third place finish last year at Le Mans. Now they are striving for their first ELMS win. With the driver lineup we have and, and the way the team is pushing, I think the goal is definitely to win. Julian and Will obviously know each other very well and I feel like I can bring quite a lot to the team and obviously they do as well because they, they signed me. We're going to do the best we can this weekend and hopefully get a good result. <laughs> In the new Pro-Am category, Ultimate leads the title race, a great return to form for the French team who took a year off in 2020 to prepare for their first ever LMP2 entry. Before beginning this, uh, this championship this year, we, we didn't know at all where we, we can be in terms of performance. It was quite a big surprise to, to do this result in Barcelona. We won the Pro-Am category, we can fight for the championship. It's uh, clearly an objective for us from now, but the, the fight will be, will be hard uh, during all these races. To be in pole position here is very important to start and uh, I hope it will be also good for the race but uh, it seems to be okay at the moment. The level is quite high like in WEC. The competition is quite hard also here, it's not because it's European. I mean but maybe a bit less cars but uh, same level. The course is green, a one man team. Better pump your fist when you jump with this. I'm the best at own your list, just watch, don't miss. I'm a war machine on the streets. Whether the course is. Green. We've been quite close already last time in Barcelona. It was a bit uh, frustrating for us, for the whole team. But uh, yesterday I finally did my first pole position and I'm really hoping that today we can we can win this. I think the weather will be will be crazy today and it will be just the key to stay on track and make no mistakes. With this, I'm the best at own your list, just watch don't miss. <laughs> Never quit, yeah, I won't stop. Don't do it for the props, just to rock the block. Don't care what haters say, I'ma make it to the top. They can talk or they won't, I'ma leave them shot, yeah. Never quit, yeah, I won't stop. Don't do it for the props, just to rock the block. Don't care what haters say, I'ma make it to the top. They can talk or they won't, I'ma leave them shot. No way out. It gives us 
a great platform to build on in the race. Uh, and yeah, we hope to stay there until the end. It's our first year in, uh, in this machine as a team, so the first objective is to learn as much as we can. But obviously, if we can get some results along the way, that would be nice. Ready to go for round two of the 2021 ELMS, the four hours of the Red Bull Ring. Sally Yolich on pole for Diego Manchaka alongside Algarve Pro, Nico Jamat and John Falp on row two. Lights out, away we go in bright sunshine. The rush uphill to the first corner. Falp looking inside the pole man. They're nearly four wide. Lock up from the front row men. Everybody safely through the big runoff area often gets used. There's somebody out there and a couple of GT cars as well, but no contact. Up to the hairpin, John Falp leads for G Drive ahead of Sally Yolich, the pole man. Then Nico Jama, United Auto Sports number 32. Paul Lafargue, the red and black car in fourth place. That's Edex Sport. Then Phil Hansen, the second United car. He's got ahead of Diego Menchaca from Algarve Pro. Yifi Ye for WRT is right behind on the curbs on the inside. 34, Sally Yolich trying to hang on to second. Nicola Jama, United Auto Sports going outside inside. He moves up into second place. That's a good Red Bull ring move. Oh, trouble! Oh, big impact. That's Rob Hode, the orange Team Virage car. It looks like he's clattered into Alessandro Bressan and Eric Trouillet. And that surely will bring out the safety car. Well, looks like the car snapped away from Rob Hodes under braking. But that is a big, bad break for the Team Virage crew. American driver, I'm not sure he's going to make it back to the pits. The graph car looked pretty heavily damaged at the front as well. well that hairpin is always a bit of a pinch point. Let's take a look again. The orange car, rear end locks up under braking. Oh, that is a big impact. The Villorba Corsa driver, Alessandro Bressan, had no idea what was happening there. Nor did Eric Trier, I think. Information to the pit lane, information to the pit lane. Car 25, drive through penalty for overtaking other cars at T1 at the start of the race, beyond track limits and gaining position no, with it. Good, yeah, he went wide around the outside through the runoff, didn't he? One aim Villorb, of course, no race for them, I'm afraid. They're done after just one lap. Team Virage are out as well, but it does look as though the Graf car might make it back in. So we are getting ready to go racing once more. John Falp, your leader in that G-Drive car now with the potential penalty. Behind him is the United Auto Sport car of Nico Jama, then racing team Turkey, Sally Yolich in third, ahead of United's Phil Hansen. Hansen on the attack. Down the straight, flashes the headlights. Can't get through though into turn one as we go back to green flag racing in LMP3. Number three United car also in action. Colin Noble for Nielsen, the number seven machine up the inside. Phil Hansen attacking Sally Yolich in the racing team Turkey car. This is the battle for third in LMP2. But they're being dropped by the leaders, John Falp and Nico Jama. Looks as though Jolic is holding them up. On board in the cool racing car, Nicola Maulini chasing Rob Weldon. United Auto Sports number two car. The battle for the lead in LMP3. 
defending champions versus the Barcelona winners. Back to the battle for third in LMP2. The red car racing Team Turkey up to turn three. Hanging on at Gosa, but Phil Hansen had the grippier side of the track. Keeps the momentum up. They sweep down through the valley into the power horse curve, turn four, and by the louder curve, he's in front. WRT making the moves here. This is Yifei Ye passing Roman Rusinov for seventh place. On board with the Chinese driver from Team WRT, the winners last time out versus multiple champions. Through he goes. United Auto Sports second and third in traffic behind the Proton Competition Porsche. Trying to find their way through. The GT battle rages. There's the G-Drive car. This is the battle for the race lead, Nicolas Jama. Up the inside into turn two. And through he goes, passes John Falp at the hairpin. No, this is not a replay. John Falp under pressure again from United. This time, though, it's the 22 car, not the 32. There's 32, the leader, Nico Jamin, 22. Through goes Phil Hansen. It's now United Autosports 1-2. The 25 G-Drive car is back to third. Colin Noble attacking Rob Weldon for the LMP3 lead again. And through he goes. On board with Yifei Ye. Chasing John Falp. There is the 25G drive car. This is the battle for third place now. So Falp started on row three of the grid. Went around the outside of everybody in turn one to take the lead and is gradually being shuffled back. And Falp will need to take his penalty soon as well. Battle for fourth place down the straight. It's G drive again. This time, not John Falp. He is in the pit serving his drive through. It's Roman Rusinov. Rusinov having a go at Sally Yolich. Gets the run on him as they come down the hill. GT car in the way. It's the number 80 Iron Lynx car. That's the class leader, Matteo Crisoni. They go either side of him. And he has got a lot of LMP2 cars right behind him. United Auto Sports leading a 1 2. 3.2 seconds between Nico Jama in first place and Phil Hansen in second, but the gap is coming down. 22 is closing, slowly but surely. Matteo Crisoni now a little less busy in the mirrors. He leads in GTE for Iron Lynx, the number 80 car out front, shares with Nino Mastrinardi and Miguel Molina. Replay here of a change for third place in GTE. The Iron Dames car, that's Manuela Gosner, slides up the inside of Rodrigo Sales. Drive through penalty, car 22 for abusing track limits even after the warning. That's really bad news for Phil Hansen. Both United cars precisely at that moment pit together, first and second. The 22 car will have to pit again to serve that penalty. You cannot continue to abuse track limits. Driver changes there. Yifaye then, leading for WRT, but yet to stop. Manuel Maldonado taking over from Nico Jama. This is the car that came in in first place. Prime leader's ultimate. Jean-Baptiste Lahaye taking over from starting driver Francois Herriot. And JB's brother Mathieu is strapping him in. Drivers can't see down with a helmet and a hands device to be able to do up their own belts safely. Fuel finished at WRT. They are ready to go. If EA stays in, up goes the lollipop. And out he goes. Oh, G Drive coming on the right hand side. Oh, this could be very close. Was that unsafe release? There may be a penalty there for the 26 G Drive car. Nose to tail, Nick de Vries in front of Yifei Ye. This could be very interesting for the Chinese driver, pitting himself against a genuine Grand Prix star. They've got an LMP3 car and the Proton Competition Porsche in between them as they come out of the pits, heavy with fuel on fresh tyres. Battle for third in GTE. Manuela Gosler with Francois Perodo right behind the air. Of course, a Ferrari down the inside. And through he goes at the hairpin. That's a good move. Manuela Gosler coming back at him, though. Down the hill and then back up towards turn three. Side by side. A 
Francois with the Grippia racing line. Manuela on the inside uses the curbs to avoid contact. Looks like that place may be decided at least for now in favor of the AF Corsa car. And of course, they didn't race in Barcelona. Two positive COVID tests. Matteo Crisoli leading from Duncan Cameron. Battle for fourth place in LMP3. Mike Benham, RLRM Sport, the orange and black car with Rory Penton of the Graf right behind. Through goes Sally Yolich, racing Team Turkey. Penton and tries to follow. All contact. Spins out the RLRM Sport car and gets caught himself. Double contact. It looks as though both cars are rejoining the track. They'll be heading for the pit lane though. And there's a lot of damage on the back of the Graf racing car. Top 10 battle in LMP2, and this is for second place in Pro-Am. Maxime Robin for Graf just ahead of the battle between Rui Andrade in the 25G drive car and Jean-Baptiste Lehe for ultimate. And the ultimate driver is right behind. Now, is he going to be able to pull out down into turn one? He's thinking about it. No, doesn't go through there. And he's had a lunge already, look. Ran out wide into the gravel. A long way off, found terra firma. So he did well to survive that moment. Blue on blue, Phil Hansen attacks Manuel Maldonado, Pastor Maldonado's cousin, for third place, and through he goes. He exports Paul Lafargue in trouble, get caught behind the LMP3 car there, and right behind is Rene Binder. The lime green highlights on the Duquesne team car squeezes through for sixth place. Replay here, and that is Maxime Robin dropping off the track. Rui Andrade, the 25G drive car, goes by to take the Pro Am race lead. The car run, of course, by Algarve Pro. Bino Mastronardi, the black Ferrari, leading for Iron Links in GTE. 15 seconds clear of his closest rival. The white WeatherTech Porsche in front, that's the 77 car. Cooper McNeil is in the car as well this weekend. Seventh place, they're nearly a lap behind the leader. Battle for third in GTE. 55 Spirit of Race, Duncan Cameron, Manuela Gossel, though half spinning behind as she tries to close into the hairpin. Our race leader. Nick de Vries for G-Drive, eight and a half seconds ahead of Yiffe Ye for WRT. So the old hands, G-Drive number 26 car leading, but last time's winners, WRT, are very much in the hunt, with United in third and fourth place. 90 minutes in, the weather is holding up so far, still warm and dry, but there is rain forecast. 32 United car in the pits, Manuel Maldonado. Last pit stops, 22 is in as well. The G Drive come in as well, Nick de Vries. Jonathan Aberdyne in the 22 United car at a halt as well. And WRT are in from second place. This could be critical, G Drive very sharp indeed in the pits. There's the WRT car behind. On board shows the screen being cleaned. Robert Kubica taking over from Yife Ye. The team member will be there to strap in the Polish driver. Endurance racing is the same as all other racing. Go fast on track, win race. But to go fast on track, you have to spend as little time as possible in the pits. And that's why it's such a team competition. Again, G-Drive away on the button. Fuel host still attached to WRT. Look at the top of the picture now. They scramble out with the tyres. All four will be changed. Door closes for Kubica. He'll be ready to go when the car is. This is Richard Leitz all over the back of Rodrigo Sales. We're on board with the Austrian driver on his home track in a Porsche where he has spent so much of his time racing. 93 Proton car goes by for fourth place. Trouble at the hairpin, James Allen in the Panis LMP2 car catching a P3 battle. He just has to stand on the anchors to avoid contact. More blue on blue action here. Jonathan Aberdyne, 22 United Autosports. Manuel Maldonado in the 32 car just in front. So this is for a podium spot. And the 22 recovering, don't forget, after that drive-through penalty for Phil Hansen that had to be served after the last pit stop. 
And through on the inside, it looks as though Jonathan Aberdyne has got the move done. He does. Uses the LMP3 traffic well. Squeezes through into the final two right-handers. He's up to third as they come past the pits. Battle for fifth place in LMP2 with the green highlights. Rene Binder for Duquesne and Charlie Eastwood for Racing Team Turkey just goes right by him. Caught him and passed him. Richard Bradley under pressure from Paul-Luc Chatin. Bradley for Algarve Pro with the green colours and Chatin on the inside. That's a good move. Straight by. Now a little applause there from Algarve Pro. Change for seventh. G-Drive, Nick de Vries, the race leader, working his way through the traffic. Now up almost to the top six in LMP2. That's Richard Bradley for Algarve Pro ahead of him. And he's just about to put a lap on him. WRT in second, United Autosport still third and fourth. Michael Fassbender taking over the second place GTE Porsche from Richard Leitz. Proton's 93 car doing well here. Still just about half the race left to go. Algarve Pro's Richard Bradley under pressure once more. Ultimate Jean-Baptiste Lahaye. Well, eased over the white line by Bradley trying to defend the spot. This is for seventh and Jean-Baptiste goes through. That's his brother Mathieu there with the helmet on in the centre of the shot. They may be due a stop soon. Oh, very nice, JB. Good move. That's what you like to hear from the team they were watching. We are declaring the track wet. We are declaring the track wet. So the rain showers have finally arrived. It's dry in the pit lane, and Reno Mastronardi, the GTE leader, has brand new slicks going on. They are having a gamble. Up the hairpin, still dry. Algarve Pro versus Panis, James Allen in the 65 Panis car. Oh, over through the ditch and over the curbs, bouncing around. Manuel Maldonado off in the final couple of corners. He's got the wiper on, but the track still looks pretty dry in most places. So what happened there? It's the number 60 Iron Lynx Ferrari. Oh, I'm not sure he thought that Maldonado was going to be there on the inside. Giorgio Cernagiotto, there was contact. I think they've both got away pretty much unscathed. Lucky for both. Race leader for G-Drive, Nick De Vries. Everybody's got their wipers on, but the track, look, you can't see any tyre marks. It is mostly dry still. The track being declared wet allows teams to change off slicks should they want or need to. It doesn't mean that you need a canoe. However, as we ride on board with the cool racing car of Niklas Koyten, it does look as though the rain may be getting heavy. There is a lot of rain in the mountains over there. And off is the number 60 car. Senna Giotto was seventh in GTE. Whoa, very much wetter than he was anticipating there and just makes contact with the barriers, but he might get out of there. In the pits, Julian Aberdyne. 22 United Auto Sports car. They're bringing in the 25 G-Drive car as well, Rui Andrade. Looks like they're going for intermediates and the rain is now getting very heavy. Robert Kubica in at WRT, may well be asking for a full wet weather tire. Now everybody scrambling to get the right tyre on their car. It's very wet now. Do you gamble on an intermediate? Oh, somebody just flew. Oh, well, there's James Allen for Panis Racing. Somebody else flew across and just missed him. It's a United car. That's Jot van Eutert. Well, that was a very close shave. He's on hard standing. James Allen is stuck in the gravel and Nick de Vries is taking no chances. The race leader is in at G-Drive and they're going to slot in Franco Colapinto. Well, that's not a baptism of fire. This is a Duquesne car. That's off as well. So is the racing team Turkey machine, number 34, Idexport. That's Paul-Luc Chatin, rally crossing away from the beached cars. But under safety car boards and vigorously waved yellows, you should not be going fast enough to go off. 
you know it's raining. Racing experience LMP3 car off there as well. Safety car is out. And look at the way that James Allen just sailed off into the gravel. He wasn't alone. And look at Charlie Eastwood racing Team Turkey. Somehow manages to avoid running into the back of the Panis car in the gravel. Oh my goodness, and Jot van Oyten nearly hit him. Paul Luc Chatin's view, understeer, 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 rattle of gravel, lots more understeer. He got away with that one. He shouldn't have been off. It's absolutely torrential rain now, real stair rods. And there's David Hauser. The racing experience car has not gone much further. Safety car is out. Just to try and help everybody survive to get back to the pits. Cool Racing's Nick Croyton sums it up well, I think. Jan van Oetert for United Autosports back in the pits, wet where the tyres go on, but there will be lots of work still needed to do. And this is Arnold Robin for Graf. Car just aquaplaning into the barriers. Safety car remains out. The Graf car trying to get himself heading in the right direction. Franco Colapinto into the pits for G-Drive. Nick de Vries came in on slicks, but surely they didn't leave Colapinto on slicks. Wet where the tyres are ready now, however, for the Argentine. G-Drive is now in the pit lane, so you are leading. That's very good news for WOT and Robert Kubica. G-Drive will lose a lot of time behind the safety car. Driver change here, Runo Mastronardi hands over to Miguel Molina. They were the GTE class leaders, but that is going to change positions. Matt Griffin will be the leader, and Alessia Rivera second for AF Corsa. Look at the weather coming in. The car is covered in rain inside. These cars are not built to be waterproof. Pit stop for G-Drive, the wets are coming off. And slicks intermediates. Intermediates going on to Franco Colapinto's car. Safety car in at the end of this lap. Safety car in at the end of this lap. Robert Kubica then leading for WRT. The 22 United car right behind. 26 G drive. They have put Colapinto on to intermediates. The rain looks to have completely stopped, but the track is very wet indeed. However, it should dry. I think G-Drive are gambling that everybody else will have to stop again, but you've got to survive first. And Antonin Borger for Cool Racing showing how hard that is. Behind the ultimate car is... Oh, contact! Need export. Patrick Pile on the inside. Goes by Roberto Mary. Roberto Mary in the 25 G-Drive car. Mary coming in from a career in top flight single seaters. Patrick Pile, of course, raced Porsche GT cars for years. And the Edex Sport car just clinging on. But here comes Mary, who's got the inside line. And there'll be as little grip there as there is on the racing line. But he's got the tight inside move at the hairpin. He goes through for fifth, at least for the moment. And Patrick Pile probably won't take that lying down. Great racing between the two. Oh, here comes Roberto Mary. Dive bombs Mathieu Lahaye. Mathieu caught napping there. The G-Drive car just arrived and drove by him. Now, who's adapting best to the changing conditions? David Drew with Wayne Boyd closing behind. This is the battle for third place in LMP3. Wayne Boyd for the United Auto Sports number two machine. They're working their way back up the order. Wayne Boyd lapping a little quicker than the Graf Racing car of David Drew, but Drew is the first to get to the traffic, so it might be a little harder for him to work his way through. Battle the third in LMP2, the charging Roberto Mary for G-Drive. He's going to go around the outside of Tom Gamble. No, he doesn't, but Gamble outbreaks himself at the hairpin. Drifts out too wide, no grip at all, and Mary goes through for third. Race leader in the pits, Robert Kubica's job is done. And Louis Delatraz, the Swiss driver, runs around to take over. 
clean of the screen as fuel goes in. That's a safety issue. And then they're going into us. Franco Colapinto comes across the stripe. The Argentine driver will be the new race leader. They will need to stop again as well. WRT have made their final stop unless something else happens with the weather. So Louis Delatraz heads out on track. Father Jean Denis racing the previous weekend at the Monaco Historic Grand Prix in some fabulous XF1 machinery from the 1970s. LMP3 leader now Matt Bell. He's taken over from Nicolas Croynton in the 19 Cool Racing machine. Less like a swimming pool now, I think you'd admit. So he's eight laps into what will be the final stint for the car. And 12 seconds a lap slower than they were in the dry. GTE leader, still the number 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari. This is Miguel Molina. And behind him is the TF Sport Aston trying to unlap itself. And he can let the Aston go. Final pit stop for Franco Colapinto inside the final half hour. This will be fuel only, a splash and dash, unless they gamble on slicks. No gambling, they haven't got much time to spare. Away goes Colapinto. So where is Louis Delatraz for Team WRT? He's coming out of the final corner. This will be close. He's right in front of you. He's right in front of you. Go for it. Oh, he will go for it as well. And he's got speed. He's on the dry track. Out comes the G-Drive car. There is the WRT machine. G-Drive's Franco Colapinto in front of Louis Delatraz by a few meters. They'll have the same fuel load. They're on the same tires that have done roughly the same distance. So now it comes down to who can work best with what they've got in the remaining 25 minutes. Drive through car 22 for crossing the white line at pit entry. Second unforced error for United. Here's the WRT team. And look at Louis Delatraz chasing G-Drive. Franco Colapinto goes past one LMP3 car. He's going to get to the inter Europol car at the hairpin. He goes deep on the inside. He's going to have to send this. A little oversteer as he over rotates. He's on the curbs, loses traction. Here comes Delatraz on the inside. The WRT car on the wet part of the track, but he had enough. Yes! Get in, says Van Sambos, the team boss in the cap there. WRT grab the lead. Louis Delatraz saw his chance and took it. Final five minutes, Louis Delatraz with the commanding lead over G Drive's Franco Colapinto, now resigned to second. Information to the pit lane. Car eight and car 12, 101 seconds stop and go penalty. Heading down to the chequered flag, Louis Delatraz. And it will be their second victory. Delatraz grab the lead, following a mistake by Franco Colapinto, and they never looked back. They win the four hours of the Red Bull ring. Yes, yeah, boy! Nice boy, good job, everyone. Thank you very much. Number 26 G Drive car in second, and the number 25 G Drive car takes third place and the Pro Am victory for Roberto Mary and his teammates. LMP3 will come down to a final corner battle. Matt Bell, the 19 cool racing car on worn tyres, trying to hold off Joey Alders, the Euro International driver, pulls out of the toe, but just too shy, 11 hundredths of a second behind. Cool Racing claim their second win and AF Corsa, Alessio Rivera brings the 88 car across the line. They didn't race in Barcelona after Francois Perodo and Manu Cala both tested positive for COVID. So it's a second win for WRT with G-Drive second and third and winning in Pro-Am. Cool Racing take victory in LMP3, Euro International second by an inch, Graf in third after their penalty, and Ferrari 1-2-3 in GTE. A of course is 88 ahead of Spirit Race, and Barcelona winners Iron Lynx number 80 in third place.
Rain did not stop play for Team WRT. They produced the goods once again. We were not thinking to get two wins out of two. Uh, it has been a difficult race with difficult conditions. Uh, we managed uh, making good decisions, good calls, and uh, yeah, uh, good drive from all my teammates, good job from the team. And uh, it wasn't easy, but uh, again, we haven't done any mistakes. Uh, we keep it clean and tidy, and uh, yeah, that's uh, fundamental. WRT's race winners, Robert Kubica, Louis Delachaz, and Yife Ye top the podium. And she drives Roman Rusinov, Franco Colapinto, and Nick de Vries with John Falp, Rui Andrade, and Roberto Mary third for G Drive. Two races, two wins, and a 19-point lead for WRT. G-Drive 26 car in second. United Autosports, the reigning champs, in third. Second in Barcelona, Panis dropped to sixth after finishing only 14th in the Red Bull ring. And for the number 25 G-Drive car, it was a busy race. Pro-Am victory, the reward. What a crazy race. Um... The start was amazing. Uh, we were in the lead for quite a while, then the safety car came and uh, lost a couple positions after that. We were fighting uh, mid-pack. Rui did a fantastic job. And then we put uh, Roberto in the car and he did an amazing job. John Falp, Roberto Mary and Rui Andrade top the pro and podium. Sally Yolich, Charlie Eastwood and Logan Sargent, second for Racing Team Turkey, ahead of Ultimate Slahey Brothers of Francois Erio. And that means we have a new leader in the Pro-Am rankings. G drives number 25, three ahead of Ultimate, with Racing Team Turkey and Cool Racing tied for third. Their first race start of the season, and AF Corsa claim victory. It's a tough track, so starting with the double stint was not easy for me, but uh, plus I got to drive through for track limits, so it's, uh, it was complicated. Then Manu took the wheel, and uh, I mean, he had a terrible stint. I think he was on slick tires during a downpour. Then uh, Alesso brought her home, so a really exciting race all the way to the last, uh, last lap, so no, great for us, good result. Francois Perodo, Manu Kala and Lesio Rivera winning GTE for AF Corsa ahead of David Perel, Matt Griffin and Duncan Cameron and Spirit of Race. Barcelona winners Iron Links, Miguel Molina, Rino Mastronardi and Matteo Crisoni on the podium again in third position. And that tightens the points battle up seven in front now. Iron Links from Spirit of Race, Proton 77 car slipping to third. It was very close at the end for the crew of the 19 Cool Racing car, but they won LMP3 for the second time this season. Brilliant strategy from the team. It was a strategy race, that one in the end. Uh, awesome call from the Cool Racing guys to give me the gap. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I was able to hold on at the end. So great team result. That cool Racing's Matt Bell, Nicola Maulini and Nicholas Croyton, the LMP3 winners from Euro International. Andrea Dromedari, Kemp bullock -Bassi, and Joey Alders. Into Europol were third on the podium, but penalised down to fourth place as the number eight graph was moved up to third. Those two wins give Cool Racing a 23-point advantage. Euro International up to third. Reigning champions number two from United Autosports are only in tenth. First choice, LMP2, Phil Hansen hanging on in front of teammate Manuel Maldonado. Maldonado goes outside around the left-hander that gives him the inside line for the turn two hairpin. They're wheel-to-wheel -wheel under braking, but Hansen has no option other than to give the place to his teammate. It's a Red Bull Ring classic. Choice two and circuit knowledge here from the driver of the green Porsche, Richard Leitz. The Austrian driver holds the inside line, doesn't have enough to pass in turn three. And then he's left on the outside of turn four at Gersa. That gives the Ferrari the advantage. Leitz looks to cut back underneath. Rodrigo Sales keeps the door closed though. And into the Nicky Lauda curve, he is still in front. However, down into the Jochen Rink curve, Again, that knowledge works well in favour of Richard Leitz and the Austrian driver sweeps by. 
Your final choice again in LMP2, Richard Bradley under pressure from Paul Luc Chatin. So the IDEX Sport car is right behind as they come off the first turn. Hairpin has to take to the grass as Bradley tries to line up a move to make sure the TF Sport Aston Martin has seen him. Flashing his headlights at the GT car. Through he goes at the hairpin, but it holds him up. He's offline and Chatan has a much better run off the curve. He's got the advantage coming up into the braking area and through he goes, takes the spot. Made your choice, vote now on the LMS Facebook official page. And that's it from the Red Bull Ring. Next time out, we'll be in France. Huge of all conditions down here in the south of France, Le Castellet. One minute for it on the grid. So let's get things going for the European Le Mans series.